Welcome back. In the first part of our discussion on sugar analysis, we explored the importance of accurately identifying and quantifying sugars, especially in food, beverages, and pharmaceuticals. We covered the basics of sugar classification and the analytical techniques used to measure them. If you missed that, you might find it useful to watch before continuing with today's topic. Now, let's move on to the next phase of our exploration. In the last video, we introduced sugar HPLC separation methods. One example showing the separation capability of amino column. Let me show another column for the separation of sugars. The Shimpak SC A101N is a combined mode column of both gel filtration and ligand exchange with exchangeable sodium ions on the surface of the column. It can be used for monosugar separation in food sample. This application note shows the analysis of sucrose, glucose, and fructose juice samples. You can see that the elution sequence is opposite from amino column. First, the sugar sucrose, then monosugar glucose and fructose. Sugar analysis involves sample preparation like extraction, dilution, filtering, and SPE cleanup if it is necessary. The liquid sample obtained is injected to HPLC for analysis and gives quantitative results of individual sugars and the total content of sugars in the sample. The analysis procedure and method must be validated and pass the proficiency test before it can be used for providing testing service for commercial products. AOAC has recommended number of official methods for food sugar analysis in various types of samples. As we can see from this summary table, more AOAC methods use amino column with water and acetonitrile as the mobile phase. RID is the recommended detector. However, ELSD can be used as alternative option with similar or modified LC conditions. Now, let's demonstrate an HPLC RID method for analysis of five food sugars in beverage samples. This method is in reference to the AOAC 980.13 official method. Four beverage samples were obtained from local market. The oolong tea has no sugar as labeled. Green tea and red date samples contain 4.9 g per 100 ml, and the tea tariq contains 6.0 g per 100 ml as labeled. Transfer one milliliter of each sample and dilute it with a diluent by 50 times. The samples are centrifuged at 4,000 RPM for 15 minutes and then filtered with 0.45 um syringe filter into HPLC sample vials. The five sugars are well separated and detected using a Shimpak amino column and RID detector. Linear calibration curves of the five sugars were established for concentration range from 50 p.m. to 2,000 pounds. The quantitative results of sugars in the four samples are determined using this HPLC RID method. In sample one, oolong tea, no, any sugar was detected, which is the same as the label. However, in sample four, te tariq, four sugars were detected and quantified with 1,000.4 pem of sucrose as the main sugar in the sample. The individual sugars and total sugar contents are shown in this table. Sucrose is the main sugars in all three beverages. The total sugar contents are essentially in accordance with the labeled values, that is zero in oolong tea, 4.8, 4.7, and 5.7 g per 100 ml in green tea, red dates and te tarik, respectively. Note that in te tarik, 0.3 g, of lactose per 100 ml was detected due to the presence of milk. The current method using an amino column for quantitative analysis of five sugars are evaluated and the results are summarized here. The quantitation repeatability RSD 
ranges from 0.28% to 4.1% for spiked 1G and 2.5G per 100 mol. The recoveries are at 81.2% to 100.8%. In conclusion, the current method can be further validated and applied for quantitative determination of five sugars in beverages. That brings us to the end of part two on sugar analysis. We've now gone deeper into the analytical techniques, understanding how different sugars are identified and quantified in various industries. Excellence in science, Shimazu.